this webcast we're going to have a look at how to do correlations on SPSS and the example we're going to use is the example from uh, the textbook which uh, was looking at different variables uh, that might relate to each other uh, within the context of exams. So we've got a data set which uh, you can see on the screen which has got various measures that relate to taking exams. So one of them is how much revision you've done. Uh, there's one uh, that measures how anxious you are about taking exams. And there's another one which is your actual exam performance. So what we'd be predicting here is there might be some kind of relationship between how much revision you do, for example, and how well you do the exam. In an ideal world, the more revision you do, the better you do in the exam. The other thing we might expect is some kind of relationship between anxiety and how you do in the exam, because it's reasonably well known that uh, if, if you're very, very anxious about exams, you're not going to perform very well, and therefore you might do worse on your exam. So to test out whether these, uh, or how big these relationships are, we can do a correlation. Now in SPSS, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got your data laid out as they are here. So you can see, uh, as is usually the case, each row of the data set represents a person and each column in the data set represents a variable. So for example, if we look at the first row of the data set, we can see that the first participant we looked at did four hours of revision. They got 40% on their exam and their anxiety score was 86.3, quite high. Now, to run the correlations, we just go to the Analyze menu, and you can see when you click on this menu, uh, as you would have seen if you watch any other podcasts, this is where all the action happens. You've got lots and lots of uh, different kinds of tests you can do, and the correlations are all, unsurprisingly, in the Correlate menu. So if you go to that, and what we're looking at is correlations between two variables, and that's known as a bivariate correlation. So if we select bivariate correlation, we get a dialog box like this little one here. Now, all we have to do is to select the variables that we want to correlate and drag them across into the box labeled variables. So, well, exam performance, we're interested in that. So we can click on exam performance and press the button to move it over. Also interested in the time spent revising. And again, we can uh, actually drag that over as well. And finally, exam anxiety. So we've got our three selected variables. Now all we have to decide is what kind of correlation coefficient we want. And there are various choices. There's the Pearson correlation coefficient. But if you have non-parametric data, you could also select, for example, Kendall's Tau or Spearman's Row. So if you want non-parametric or parametric correlations, you can get them in exactly the, from exactly the same dialog box. It just, the only difference is you'd say deselect Pearson and select Spearman. Now, in this case, we want a Pearson one. You can ask, uh, you can ask SPSS uh, to give you one-tailed significance levels or two-tailed. And I think we'll leave that at two-tailed. And if you click on options, you can ask it for some means and standard deviations of your variables. That might be useful, might not. And cross product deviations and covariances. And they're just, uh, well, they can be useful information, but nine times out of ten, uh, people don't really want to look at them. The covariances, for example, are just unstandardized correlation coefficients. So uh, we're not necessarily that interested in those. But if you are, click on it. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. We can click on OK. You can see now the uh, output viewer window whizzes into life. And we get this table here. So this tells us, if we look at correlates of exam performance, a time spent revising, there's a positive correlation between the time spent revising and how well you do on your exam. And uh, the value of that is 0.397. And that's actually a reasonable sized correlation. And if we look at the significance value here, that's highly significant. This is it, 0.000. That's less than 0.05. 
So uh, we would consider that significant. The thing is, the correlation coefficient is in itself an effect size. So in many ways, the significance is not nearly as interesting as the actual size of the correlation. And like I said, that's a, a moderately sized one. Um, if we have a look at the correlation between how anxious you are and your exam performance, we get a negative relationship and its value is, is minus 0.441. Again, this is highly significant, but it's more interesting in a way to actually just interpret the size of this correlation, which again is in the sort of moderate to large range. The fact it's uh, got a negative value on it tells us that as exam anxiety goes up, exam performance goes down. So if you're anxious, you uh, do worse in the exam. Uh, the other thing we can look at, there's a third correlation here, which is uh, between the time you spend revising and your exam anxiety. And uh, this, uh, again, we get a value for the correlation, which is minus 0.709. Now that's a very high correlation. It's highly significant in this case, as we can see from the significance value here. Uh, but also we just know from the size of it that that's a really big effect. Correlation quite of 0.71 is very big. Um, so this tells us that the more anxious you are, the less time you spend revising. So that's pretty much all there is to doing a correlation on SPSS. As I said, if you want a non-parametric correlation for any reason, you just select uh, a different tick box and uh, the rest of the process is exactly the same.